right, so I'm about to throw two verses at you from Romans, and this is the thing. There is so much in just these two verses that um, I don't know where you're watching from right now, but where I am, spring is, is just like starting to blast out all over the place, and everywhere you look, everything is blooming all at once. And in my yard, stuff is blooming that I didn't even know I planted. I do not remember planting this stuff, and it's just coming up. There are bulbs coming up that I didn't, I, I don't remember putting them in the ground. So here's here's my point. These two verses, verses that I'm about to share with you are kind of the same way. It's like spring. There's so much under the surface on top, all around, right in front. There's so much in these two really, really easy, simple verses. I can't even, I can't even give all of it out there. I just can't. So I'm going to give like the snippet of these two and they're both in Romans. Okay. I'm going to start with Romans 8.15 and I'm going to read it from first from the New Living Translation. So you should not be like cowering, fearful slaves. You should behave instead like God's very own children, adopted into his family, calling him father, dear father. Wow. Okay, so first of all, adopted into God's family and behaving as his children. You know, I immediately think about the royal family, and I think about the children, and how they behave. And sometimes they kind of misbehave, but but most of the time they have um, a childlike reverence, but a childlike inquisitiveness. And they've always got that little gleam in their eye like, okay, what's going to happen next? Well, now I want to read to you the same verse, Romans 8.15, from the message. This resurrection life you received from God is not a timid grave tending life it's adventurously expectant greeting god with a child like what's next papa how cool is that it it's just this absolute expecting adventure and it says in the message it says adventurously expectant well i'm flipping that and saying you get to expect an adventure constantly all the time now i'm not saying every adventure is a uh, party because sometimes adventures are not a whole lot of fun but they are adventures and when you come at this from okay what's next what are we doing where are we going what's happening that's how when you see pictures of the children um, the royal family when you see those children those cute little kids they've always got like I said that little gleam in their eye they're being pretty well behaved but they've got that little gleam in their eye going okay what are we doing next? Where are we going? What's going to happen? What kind of little bit of mischief can I get into? The part of this that is is kind of there, kind of in the other translations, it's very there. But when it talks about adoption and um, that you haven't received a spirit of slavery or you have not, um, you don't have to be cowering, fearful slaves, that's the thing. Slaves are always in fear because they never know, even if they don't do anything wrong, they're still going to get in trouble. And if they do everything right, they're still going to get in trouble probably. And they don't have a seat at the table. They don't have an inheritance. They have nothing. They're, they're basically non, non-beings, if that makes any sense. And being a non-being as a slave, now I get back in Roman times, during when this was written, there were rights and things for slaves, but I'm, I'm speaking more generally here, that there is a massive amount of fear if you're a slave in that regards. But you, if, if you're adopted into the kingdom of God, into God's family, you have the inheritance. You have a place at the table. You have the ability to ask God questions without being afraid of the answer. And there are so many times that we just don't ask the questions. We're afraid to ask the questions and we're afraid to have a little hissy fit because that's that's not reverent and you're not supposed to do that. Well, guess what? Children have hissy fits. They do. 
They're not always pretty, and it's not really a great respectful thing to do. But sometimes life just stinks, and you don't know why. And the best thing you can do is just have a little hissy fit. And then you get over it, and you're going, okay, Lord, I'm done. I'm done with the hissy fit. So I'm ready to listen. What what are we doing, and what's next? And that's the big thing. We get to go from the freaking out, scary, oh my goodness, to the, okay, what's next? I got that out of my system. What's next? I trust you. I know whatever's next is going to be an amazing adventure. I just had a little problem there and I'm over it. So what what are we doing next? There's no fear. And when we talk about fear in scripture, the fear of the Lord, it's not, as we've said before, being terrified that God's going to smack you over the head. He's not. He's not waiting for you to mess up. He's waiting for you to listen. And when you listen, oh my goodness, that's when you get the adventure. That's when you can expect the fun stuff. Because the fear is the excitement of being in the relationship and excited to see what's going to happen. It's like waiting for that glorious sunset or that sunrise that you know is going to be fabulous. That's more of the concept here, less of slavery, less of fear, more of adopted child hanging out with dad, waiting to see what's going to happen. Okay, moving on. Actually, we're not moving on. We're moving backwards um, to Romans 8, 12 through 14. I know I flipped them, but it's okay. I'm allowed. The reason I flipped them, well, I'll... We'll see. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is so cool. And I'm reading it to you again from the message because in the other translations, it's really good, obviously. But this has one specific sentence in it that I love. And you'll see why. So, okay, here we go. Uh, Romans 8, 12 through 14. So don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? There's nothing in it for us. Nothing at all. The best thing to do is is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. I bet you caught that sentence. Okay, well, I know you caught it because I really emphasized it. There are things to do and places to go. Now, no, it does not say that in the other translations like the NET or the NIV or the New Living Translation, but in the message, it has that sentence. And the reason that sentence to me is so powerful, obviously, because I like Dr. Seuss. And that is one of my favorite books, Oh, the Places You'll Go. If we took that book, if we took that book, in fact, I think I need to take that book and apply the biblical principles that are in that book, Oh, my goodness. And when you think about the fact God has prepared things for us to do before the foundations of time. Oh, hello. Let's go do it. This is very, very exciting to me because we have things to do and we have places to go and they're adventures and they're things that are fun and exciting. And God created them for us to do and to go. How could that not be exciting? How could that not be? Okay, so maybe no, maybe we're not right in the middle of the most exciting adventure. Maybe we're doing the cubicle life and the nine to five and dadgummit, this isn't fun. And where's my adventure? Well, maybe the adventure is when we stop and go, what's happening inside my cubicle? What's happening inside my office? What's happening at the store? What's happening at church? What's happening at home? The adventure is there. The places to go, it's there. The things to do, they are there. But we have to see them through the eyes of not the old do-it-yourself life, but the new life God has given you, the one he's calling and saying, hey, over here, let's go, load up. Yes, you have shotgun. Let's go, we got stuff to do.
Okay, so what in the world does this look like? Think of it this way. Start looking at your target run as your assignment, as your mission impossible. Start looking at the pickup line for school as mission impossible. All of these interactions that you have become your things to do, your places to go. Start looking at having coffee with the friend at the local coffee shop. Yay, finding friend, having coffee. What about the barista? What about the person sitting beside you? What about the person you meet on the way? What about the person at the gas station? These are all the things you do and the places you go. The life and the adventure is embedded in your daily routine or not routine. When we look at things from a kingdom perspective, we realize time is not an issue because there is no, there is no time in kingdom. The kingdom does not have time. We have time. The kingdom does not. When we live from the kingdom, we live for the mission. And the mission is not impossible. It is very possible. And it's because God has created our mission for each of us before the foundation of time. When we look at things that way, it's better than graduating high school. It's better than graduating college. It is an everyday, exciting, expectant adventure. This is why every time you step foot out of the door, every time, every morning you open your eyes, you have the ability, the possibility, and the option to create and live in this adventure that God has created specifically for you. And only you have that mission. No one else has that mission. That mission is just yours. Okay. When you go to bed tonight and you say your prayers or in the morning, what do you say? Okay, dad, what's next? And I want to ride shotgun. That's what you say. And you listen and you watch and he shows you. something that you feel controls your life or is constantly in the back of your head nagging at you and throwing rocks at you um check out the next video it might help give you some perspective on dealing with fear and maybe give you a way to get rid of it